Hello, and Hi. welcome to the Sake Notes. I'm Michelle. I am John, and uh, we are back from Japan. We're back from Hiroshima. We are back from Hiroshima. Um, so, uh, if you know us, you might know that we are kind of big baseball fans. Um, and during our trips to Japan, and, and more specifically to Hiroshima, we kind of decide to adopt the carp as our our team. Our team. Our, our Japanese, you know, our, our uh, Nippon Pro Baseball team. Um, Why wouldn't you? They're awesome. They're, they're really nice. When you go to Hiroshima, um, it is it is omnipresent. They are everywhere. You can't go places without seeing the carp. It was, I mean, I we've been there before just for the day, and I knew that they were crazy about carp, but then this year we spent three days there, mm -hmm. and it was even more intense with carp than I had previously remembered. It was crazy. We went to a sake festival in Hiroshima, and they just had like the carp-themed section about the sake festival. Yeah. They really like baseball. It was awesome. Um, we have our cute little carp yeah, tasting sorry, cups. Tasting cups. Now, we really thought the carp were going to make it all the way this year. I think um, everyone did. Yeah, they made it to the postseason. They made it to the Japan series, the Nippon series. And we were saving this bottle of sake we bought in Hiroshima for the day when they would win. Unfortunately, we unfortunately, waited too long. Yeah, the Fukuoka Hawks are the Japan League champions. And the number two team, though, is the Hiroshima Carp. So we're going to uh, drink some of this. Sake here. So where did we find this? We bought this in a 7-Eleven, guys. In Hiroshima, because <laughs> in Hiroshima. so it looks like it's in Hiroshima Station. Covered in newspaper about the carp. It's very beautifully wrapped. Yeah. Um, I don't know much else. Um, it's a Junmai Ginjo from a Suishin, which is a brand um, that is it's a, one of those Hiroshima sakes that honestly I, I think we have their Junmai Ginjo here in New York, but we don't hear a lot about them here. So you know, it's kind of nice to get uh, some, again, brands that I know, sakes that I don't know is a kind of a theme I was trying to go for this year on the trip. And we got this as a result. Can you get that, that gold band off? It's like a twist tie. Oh. I don't know. I didn't really want to rip up the newspaper too much. Well, it's kind of like unwrapping a gift. That's true. Yeah. So, this is, so it's newspaper with a gold twist tie and then a sticker around the outside. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing the bottle is not going to have anything on it. I don't know. We'll see. I actually, we, we have no idea now. what this looks like. It took me a while to figure out this was Swishin, actually. Uh, oh. Yeah? Is this more? It's just a uh, it's just a regular bottle of sake on the inside. Uh-huh. Okay. I just tried so hard not to rip it, and then I just ah, gave okay. up. It's just a regular bottle on the inside. Oh, wow. I'm a little disappointed. I thought it was going to be at least, at least somewhat carp- um, Themed, you know, on, the themed on the inside. I thought there'd be a label or something. Um, that's that okay. is fun. We will always have we will always have this wrapping though. Will we? We'll have it in our memories. We will. That's what I mean. We have video evidence oh, of this okay. wrapping now. And a couple of and, uh, yeah. Instagram pictures. So apparently they just wrap up regular bottles of Swishin. You know that's quite a fun idea. <laughs> if you just take newspaper and like kind of a grab bag, <laughs> random exciting mm, sake bottles. Oh, I'm sure that's a thing. I definitely saw this sake on their website. So I was trying to figure out what this was, um, and I went to their site, and they had nothing that had carp on it. Um, so now we know why. It's just, it's just on there. You celebrate the carp with Swishin. Mm. Also, I did not Ooh, put nice. the trash table next to it, no. so we're just going to have all the trash. These things happen. Um, so as Michelle alluded to earlier, we... Uh, did spend a, a nice amount of time in Hiroshima this year. I think we were there for, uh, we, let, we went on Friday and we came back on Monday. So just like a long weekend, sort of. And uh, a couple of key takeaways. One is that if you thought the, uh, if you thought Narita Airport was very far away from Tokyo, wait till you go to Hiroshima Airport. Yeah, we had to take a bus. It was actually a very nice bus and the ride was beautiful. Kind of got to go through the mountains a little bit and just like see some valley. I know, right? It's so good. This is kind of nice. I actually am a little bit sad we didn't go like two weeks later when all of the leaves had changed. I just I imagine that would have just been like breathtaking. It was oh, yeah. so beautiful, even like just green and seeing the mountains. I forget how mountainous Hiroshima is. Yeah, Hiroshima is in a valley, so 
if you're in like a, a building that's over like six stories, all you'll see are mountains all around you. It's really nice. Um, this was actually bottled in September. Wow. So this was really fresh. This is very new sake. It tastes familiar, but mm -hmm. exciting, if that makes sense. The finish is very like crisp and dry. Yeah. But the front isn't. But it's also not very From fruity. The yeah. It's, it's weird. It's hard to explain. I think the, the beginning is sort of that vanilla flavor mm -hmm. that I love so much. Mm. But the ending, like you said, is like very crisp and exciting. Yeah, we can definitely get information about this from suishinsake.com. In the meantime, though, we can tell you that this is milled to 60%. I couldn't tell you what kind of rice it is. I don't recognize the rice type. Um, it's 15% alcohol by volume. Wow. Um, so back to Hiroshima uh, and our, our visit there. Um, in theory, we went there to go to the, the Saijo uh, Matsuri, um, which is the, the big sake uh, uh, festival uh, that is like 45 minutes outside of downtown uh, Hiroshima. Um, and we had a couple of things happen to us with that. Uh, is the first one when we were on the train and we passed right by the stadium? Um, and saw like the game happening? Yeah, or getting ready nice. to happen, yeah. And then on the way back, we saw it in, in the works. Yeah, we also found that um, typhoons followed us everywhere we went in oh, Japan. Oh, yeah, that was our second one. Yeah. So the festival is usually two days over the weekend, but the typhoon hit right on the first day. So it was basically canceled. There, was hard, there were hardly any of the booths going to be open, and of course it would be raining all day. So everyone went on the second day, and it was very crowded, and it was also just very hot because there were no clouds left on the second day it was right, just like it was, sunny it was it was extremely sunny probably and was, the hottest day i think it was almost 90 degrees fahrenheit yeah um i gotta tell you standing outside in the sun um drinking uh drinking sake that's not terribly cold is not the best way to enjoy sake it was rough yeah. but uh we were so happy that we got to go the way that it works is you get seven little like stamp tickets basically with your ticket purchase when you walk in and they give you a little cup and you can walk around and exchange your tickets for tastings of sake mm -hmm. and uh, they were about actually they were they were these exactly cups exactly these cups <laughs> yeah which are slightly smaller than our Hiroshima carp cups cups or, yeah carp cups the booths were arranged sort of like a little what do you call like a little fortress i guess like you come in on the one end and then everything was around the outside, and then once you leave, you leave. And the center was, I think, more open for walking around. Mm -hmm. And well, the center was um, was a tent with with cha like um, yeah, with cha like, like picnic kind of, table kind of style where you could like stand, which and, was completely packed. Yeah, and then the outside was arranged by regions, and they gave you a book mm -hmm. that had all the information about it. It was all in Japanese, though, so. We didn't have the best time with the book. Yeah, we could But we were able to find the regions we wanted. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, the region I wanted was the one with the shortest line, and I had great luck with that, actually. Mm -hmm. They were all like really funky, weird sake, so I absolutely loved it. Yeah. The longest line, I think, was the one that you went for. The Yamagata. Yamagata line. Yeah. I got like one sake from the Yamagata line, and I realized it wasn't worth it. You had to wait on the line for like 20 minutes to get this much sake. Um, so then when, yeah. you know, then when you start going to all the different regions, you're like, oh, where's the shorter line? Like, let me just bump in here and just try whatever, you know, is close. And what looks interesting in this section, I think that's when we really started trying, like, the weird things that kind of made the Saijo Festival special, I think. Yeah. Like, their huge sake selection. And once you're just going out of your comfort zone, I think that's when it, you really start to explore. Yeah. I, I think a, a Saijo was definitely worth doing once. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I would do it again, but it was definitely a fun time that day. That was, that was a good time. Um, they had a sake cocktail section. Mm. Um, it was seven tickets or something like that. It was it was so funny. They had the sign, which of course was all in Japanese, and I. It was five tickets. You got seven. Not very good at it, but they had a couple of things written, and one said five tickets, and I think one said three tickets or two tickets, whatever it was. And I thought they were different, like sake cocktail choices. So I I told the lady that I wanted the one that was only two tickets. And she's like, you don't want sake cocktails? I'm like, no, no, I, just just the two. I don't need, you know, I don't need the fancy one. I'll just take the little one. She's like, you want the nuts? Like, you just, you it was just nuts. A, yeah, it was just like the snacks. Um, but other than that, it was great. Like, we had an easy time getting around, like easy time ordering the different sakes. They had 
not only could you see all of the bottles like in the background with the labels with their their numbered tags on them, which you know corresponded to the book, but they also sort of had like a flavor profile right there with them, and they they were kind of helping us a little bit mm -hmm. um, if you want something sweeter or drier. So overall, it was a really great experience. It was a really cool way to try so many different new sakes. Um, there were a lot of other tourists there too. That was cool. It was very touristy. Yeah, but not in a bad way. No, yeah, nobody was, was misbehaving. It was cool. Although one guy got carried out. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 he drank a lot. Um, so then on the way back, we passed by the stadium again, which was also very cool. And I think the game, I think they had lost that game though, because we were like, we're going to be in Hiroshima the night after a carp win. It's going to be epic. I think as soon as we got back from Saijo, we bought these jerseys. We were just we like did, we so did, excited. Did, everyone, everyone else in the town was like wearing all of their Hiroshima outfits. And we were like, we've got to, we've got to wear one too. Like this is so cool. Um, I yeah, Hiroshima. Great town for food, great town for drinks. We, we found so many great sake bars. Everything is open really late. Um, At least in the in the downtown quasi red lighty area. Things were open very late. Yeah, I mean I think you know like when we're staying in different areas in Tokyo, we usually kind of have to pick an area that's open late or next to trains so we can get back right. and forth to the hotel. But I guess since where we were staying, they kind of only had this like trolley car to get to right. and from. So there was no last train, you just kind of... I mean, I'm sure there was a last trolley car. I guess but, so. Um, and no Uber in Hiroshima. Uh, yeah. But we, we managed. We had a great time. They have great food. Um, they have a lot of really great like local sake that's always very exciting to try, and everyone's always very excited to share it with you. Mm. Um, what, was, what would you say the best thing that you ate was while we were there? <sighs> the thing that I ate was probably the steak at the teppanyaki place. Um, we... Uh, after the typhoon, which we um, we decided to hunker down at the local uh, round one arcade slash bowling alley slash karaoke slash uh, batting range. Yeah, the batting cage was closed because of the weather, because it's on the roof. Yeah. Um, but we did bowl, and I lost. That was quite an experience. <laughs> that was very fun. Yes. The bowling was, yeah, that's where we had the, 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 the videos of the ladies mocking you when you got a gutter ball. Yeah, if you're ever there, you should go. It's so fun. It was very cheap. They had little uh, vending machines. I think, like, large beer, like, draft beers were 200 yen. It was so fun. And if I'm not mistaken, round one is now in the United States. I cannot speak for how the bowling is or the pricing here. But it is definitely, it it was, was definitely fun for us that day. It was beautiful. It was really well organized. They had lots of, like, rhythm games and fighting games and then... The upper floors were the like the bowling and the batting cages and that sort of thing. Um, we also do we we didn't really do any sightseeing like or traditional like tourist spots. We rarely do though. We just kind of had so many local like bars and sake uh, bars specifically mm -hmm. that we wanted to see. Um, I also found a really great Daiso, probably my favorite the whole trip. Everything is about a hundred yen or a hundred yen. I think, awesome. I think people may people may not know what Daiso is. It's a it's a it's like a um, kind of like a dollar store basically, and it has a lot of like home home good stuff. They have like you know cups and bowls and stickers and um, whole stationery section and bento supplies and like candies and really just anything you can think of. And it's all so cheap and really cute. And um, I tried to visit as many Daisos as possible this year, but the one in Hiroshima was definitely my favorite. I can vouch for that. She definitely visited <laughs> as many Daisos as she could. Uh, oh, it took so me all over the ride. They, uh, they don't take cards, though, so if you do go, for my recommendation, make sure you bring enough cash. Uh, we actually did not get to have uh, Okonomiyaki this year. Oh, we tried. I was just on the, uh, like an Indian curry kick this year. Like Everywhere we went, I was having the... <laughs> Everywhere. Tandoori, like naan, and the oh, it was so good. I, I I guess it's just like more authentic, I suppose. That's possible. I mean, it was also I think a lot of the places we went to were like Nepalese, Indian, uh, like mm. Nepalese slash Indian food. The naan was like this big, <laughs> and it wasn't spicy, which I don't really like spicy things at all. So I don't get to eat Indian food here so much. But if you're like me and you don't like spicy food, you should definitely. <laughs> Have, have Indian curry in Japan? In Japan. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, a lot of times when we go, everyone asks if we eat a lot of sushi or that sort of thing. and We don't. Not really, you know. I, I ate a lot of Indian night. curry this time. It's good. Um, we had ramen a lot. So basically, we're already <laughs> planning our next trip back to Hiroshima. We are. Hopefully for a week next time. 
Um, close. The the current current status has us there a good a good couple of days. Yeah. A couple of days in Fukuoka, a lot of days in Hiroshima, then up to Tokyo. And don't forget about Kochi. If we do a day trip down to Kochi, perhaps we will, or maybe an overnighter. It's it's just a never ending party, I guess, yeah. when you go to Japan. It's just you go and you find something that's great and you have to go back and experience it again and again and again and you learn new things and so yeah. I would love to go during the baseball season someday, but I think next we year we're going jerseys. I think next year we're going for Halloween. We did try to kind of like see about what buying tickets is like when you're in what was it, a seven eleven, I guess? It was we found like a copy machine slash ticket buying machine. It was a copy machine, and you could buy tickets from the thing. Yeah, and so. we were able to um, get to the point where it told us there were no tickets available for the game. We're getting better. Which, hey, you know. <laughs> Maybe next year we'll get Maybe there early year, enough yeah. to actually buy tickets. You never know. And if you haven't been down to Hiroshima, definitely visit Hiroshima. It's oh, wonderful. It is such a great town. The people are friendly. The food is great. The sake is everywhere. And, and it's not just Hiroshima sake. Uh, we went to a lot of places that... Featured um, a lot of sakes that were, you know, from other areas and completely like one place had a lot of uh, Takachio, which is a brand from uh, Niigata and another place had a lot of Zaku uh, and uh, and Tamagawa. Tamagawa, one of your favorite sakes from Kyoto. And so they're just really big on celebrating sake there. It's just it's there's a lot of great, great places in a relatively um, small area. It's it wonderful. kind of reminds me of like the like fun party like lively lights aspect of osaka and like the food and like you know the drinking and just like that sort of vibe i guess but it's also reminds me of just the um quiet like reservedness of tokyo at the same time does that make mm. sense it's very i think i know what you mean um because the the osaka party uh is uh, it seems to be like a much younger, <laughs> yeah, and maybe more of like a younger, like college kind of feeling crowd, at mm -hmm. least for me, like that style. Um, but I don't know. I just, I think Hiroshima is amazing. Yeah. I mean, also in Hiroshima, we got drunk under the table by salarymen in their 60s. It was crazy. Yeah. At like one o'clock in the morning. It was crazy. <laughs> they have so, like they have, you know, your, your, your CD, like Izakayas. They have like fancy, um, the one that we went to. Mm -hmm. Oh, what was it? I don't even remember. We went to so many, and they all had like so many special things about them. Who even knows? It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful place. Maybe we can post the names of some of our favorites in the description. So I you think, can... yeah. I think, or maybe right now you are seeing some information about uh, our places uh, that we liked. Some really good bars and uh, in the Naka Ward of Hiroshima. Yeah. Um, on that note, I think we're going to call this one a show. Thank you for uh, joining us for this. The unveiling of this of the sake that did not look as cool as I thought it was going to. <laughs> yeah, I was a little sad. <laughs> I mean, I really, like, with this wrapper, I thought it was going to be all about the carp. Um, unfortunately, or, you know, it's still delicious, but unfortunately it's just a regular sake label from Suishin underneath. Um, yeah. Oh, well. Join us again next time. We'll be drinking some more sakes from our trip. We've got some nice Hiaroshi that we might bust out for next time. Um, from Also from Hiroshima. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, you guys have a great night and enjoy your sake. Come by. Bye. Bye bye.